Hello everybody, welcome to my channel. My name is Christy and today I have a recipe video for you that you're going to fall in love with. So if you're not subscribed, go ahead and do so because I'd love to have you as a member of my YouTube family. Make sure you follow me on Instagram. I'll have my name down here at the bottom of the screen for you. And I have a Facebook group, All Things Keto with Christy. We're approaching 6,000 members. They are amazing over there. I do tons of stuff, so make sure you go join that group. It'll be linked in the description box. Today I'm going to show you how I make my Zupa Toscana soup. This is basically a copycat version of the one from Olive Garden. Now I took my original recipe I had which was not keto and I went ahead and switched things up and made it completely keto and guess what? we have my favorite surprise ingredient. We're gonna be using radishes in the place of potatoes instead of cauliflower because my family's not a fan of cauliflower. And radishes take on a bland taste just like potatoes once they're cooked. I know it's hard to believe, but take my word for it. I'll have the macros listed below for you so you'll have that information, but it's always best to do your own because you know ingredients and macros change per item. So let's go ahead and get started and let me show you how I made this delicious soup. Today we're talking soup and this is Copycat Olive Garden Keto Zupa Toscana Soup and it tastes just like the original version. Here's the ingredients you need for this recipe. You can see there's really not that many things. You're gonna need some sausage. I picked up the ground mild Italian sausage from Aldi. This is just one pound. A bag of radishes. Bacon of choice. I just used the crumbled up bacon I pick up at Sam's. It's a 20 ounce bag. I love it, but you could use Fresh bacon, you can use bacon bits, just whatever bacon fits into your keto lifestyle. Heavy whipping cream, kale, bone broth, and you're gonna wanna use beef bone broth. My favorite right now is the Kettle and Fire. I absolutely love their products. And seasonings, garlic powder, minced onion, red pepper flakes, those are sort of optional. You can add in minced garlic if you want fresh garlic. I'm just going the easy route because I'm all about easy recipes. If you want, you can also add in chopped up onions, but that's just why I'm going with minced onion. Step one is going to be brown our meat, and this is the Italian ground mild sausage that I pick up at Aldi. You need 16 ounces or one pound. Use a large pot. This is a Dutch oven. I'm going to do it all in one pot so I don't mess up a ton of dishes. I do have a little bit of garlic olive oil in here, but just so that it doesn't stick in the very beginning. Very unnecessary process. And then just add your sausage. Using this handy dandy tool, which I picked up at Walmart, I'm going to go ahead and start crumbling this up into smaller pieces. While my meat is browning, that's when I like to add in my seasoning so that it cooks into the meat. I'm starting out with some garlic powder. Again, you can add minced garlic if you want. This is personal preference, so add as much or as little as you want. I'm also going to be adding in a few sprinkles of minced onion, but if you want to use a fresh onion, go ahead. If you're adding uncooked bacon, you're going to want to add in around four slices. You'll add that in now so that your sausage and your bacon can go ahead and cook up at the same time. Since I'm using pre-cooked bacon crumbles that are from Sam's, I'm going to go ahead and add those in after my sausage has cooked. And I'm adding in one half of a cup. So while my sausage is browning, I'm going to go ahead and start to cut up my radishes. This is one bag, which is 16 ounces of radishes. I want to peel these completely and get all of the skin off of those so that it doesn't turn pink. And I want to go ahead and quarter those up. This is a heck of a process. Let me tell you, peeling these little itty bitty radishes is tedious. Not going to lie. 
but it needs to be done. Unless you don't care if your Zupa Toscana turns out pink because this skin on the radishes will dye your soup pink. So basically, you just want to peel that off and quarter these just like you would potatoes. Once the meat is completely cooked, we're going to add in our beef bone broth. I picked mine up online from Kettle and Fire. This is two 16 ounce containers. So you're going to be adding 32 ounces of beef bone broth to your recipe. The Kettle and Fire is zero total carbs. It is cooked and simmered for 20 plus hours. They are made with 100% grass fed beef. So this is basically the best bone broth you can buy on the market. I do have a discount code. I'll have that linked below if you wanna go check out what they have. They have bone broths, they have beef and chicken, they also have them flavored, and they have creamy soups. But this is what I'm adding to today's recipe. I always give these a little shake before I go ahead and cut them open. So all you do to open these is just pull up the tabs on the top, squeeze, and then you cut along the dotted line. So I'm going to add in my first container. And my second container. And then I'm going to go ahead and give that a stir. Once I have added my bone broth, then I'm gonna add in my radishes. Now, the recipes I've seen in the past call for cauliflower. I'm not a fan. I have tried this before with cauliflower. Cauliflower has an overpowering taste sometimes to me, and some of my kids, mainly Preston, refuse to eat cauliflower. So radishes is the way that we go, and the radishes soak up the broth, the beef broth, and they just take on the taste of the beef broth. Radishes make the perfect potatoes. So I'm going to turn this up, and I'm going to simmer it covered for about 15 minutes. Okay, this has been simmering for about 15 minutes and I wanna show you that the radishes look just like potatoes and when you insert a knife, they're tender. I've turned my temp down, it's about on two now, so it's on about a medium low. So I want the boiling to just barely be going. Now we're gonna add in our heavy whipping cream and you're gonna add in one half cup And go ahead and stir that up. Oh, you can see we got one pink radish in there. Can you see that? It happens, but the majority of these look just like potatoes. Now I'm gonna add in about two cups of kale and stir that in. You could use spinach if you want, but I know this is a copycat version and I know they use kale so I'm partial to kale. So two cups, we like a lot of kale, so I usually add more than that. Then you're gonna stir this up. I'm gonna cover this up and let it cook for about five minutes. After about five minutes, we're gonna take the lid off. I'm gonna go ahead and stir that up. And another optional ingredient would be to add some crushed red pepper flakes. We like ours a little spicy, so I'm gonna go ahead and add that. I'm adding this to the end. If you like yours really spicy, you can go ahead and add that at the beginning when you're cooking your meat or when you put in your bone broth, but the girls are gonna be eating this and they're not into all the spicy stuff. I am, so I only add a little, and that's it. This tastes just like Olive Garden's Zupa Toscana. Keto friendly, made with radishes that you can't tell aren't potatoes. When we eat this, I make a fathead dough garlic bread with it, so you just use your regular fathead dough recipe, 
Sprinkle in some garlic or Italian seasonings and bake it into like long bread sticks. What's left over we store in the refrigerator and I would tell you how long it lasts, but in my house it doesn't last long. So I know this is going to last several days in the refrigerator. This is wonderful for meal prepping so that you have a quick lunch throughout the week. If you like Italian soups, if you like Olive Garden, if you like easy keto recipes, you definitely need to try this one. It takes no time to go ahead and cook up, stores well in the refrigerator, and tastes absolutely amazing. You are going to flip out over the radishes. So make sure you try this recipe. If you do, go ahead and comment below what you thought and were you fooled by the radish potato switch. Thank you so much for watching. I hope everyone has an amazing day. Check out some more of my easy keto recipes. I will have those linked at the very end in a playlist for you and in the description box so you can check them out. I'll see you next time. Bye.